Rise and shine. Good morning and welcome to Africa. I'm Professor James Connors. I'll be your guide here in the Serengeti. And I'm Valerie Devereaux, staff writer for Wild Earth. Welcome to your first assignment as photojournalist. We're glad to have you on board. So, Professor, where are we off to this fine morning? Well, I believe in this area we stand an excellent chance of finding elephants. Wonderful. But first, let's get our new recruit oriented. Your controls are listed at the bottom corner of your screen. Use the keyboard key shown to move about, and your mouse to look around. Click the left mouse button when you want to take a photo. Try snapping a picture of one of the tents here in camp. Go ahead and take a picture of one of the big tents here in camp now. Just aim, piece of cake. You also need to learn how to use the zoom lens on your camera. Hold down the right mouse button and move the mouse up to zoom in. You can also use your mouse wheel if it has one. Up on top of the hill behind the camp is a lone barren tree. Zoom in and take a photo of it for us. baobab tree is up on top of the ridge behind the camp. Excellent. Remember to zoom back out after taking photos so you can see what's going on around you. Throughout the assignment you'll be given objectives like these which will appear in the upper left corner of your screen. Search for these objectives, take good photos of them. The one at the top is your primary objective. You'll need to find it to continue on with the assignment. The rest are secondary objectives. They'll usually be nearby or on the way to the primary objective. Your photos are going to accompany the article I'm writing, so make them good ones. On each assignment, you'll need to accomplish a certain number of objectives to complete the mission successfully. That was an easy one. Some objectives will be harder to find, so keep a sharp eye out. If you miss an objective, it'll disappear from the list. But don't worry, you don't have to get every one of them. However, you will need to get most if we're going to make a successful article. So, Professor, how do we find these elephants? Well, there's a sure sign we can use to track them. They're dumb. You're joking. Not at all. They'll be hard to miss. Adult elephants excrete around 330 pounds of dung every day. That's quite a load of... No, I'm entirely serious. Look for a pile of round balls about waist height. We must be getting close. I think I smell a wumpus. That's some excellent excrement. See if there's a smaller heap around too. Could be a sign that they're with young.
Good, we're on the right track. Speaking of which, the ground is moist around the stream. It should be perfect for impressions. You want me to do an impression of an elephant? No, impressions of their feet, Val. Footprints. Looks like they're headed north. Yes, the forest is denser in that direction. See if you can spot any trees that have been damaged. You mean like gouged? Or even pushed over. In fact, elephants are... Looks like a bulldozer came through here. How inconsiderate. Change isn't always bad. Look under the fallen trees. There may be life there that's quite taken with the little niche the elephants have created. Listen, he doesn't look too happy to see us. A young male. He probably got separated from his bachelor herd. He sure is freaking out about it. Well, that's called displacement activity. Animals have emotions too, and they can get frustrated just like humans. It's okay. That was only a demonstration charge. He didn't want to hurt us, just establish his superiority. Let's follow him at a safe distance. Look, there's his herd over there. Possibly. Let's go in for a closer look. But be careful. The meter at the top of your screen measures your impact on the environment. We want to be good citizens and not disturb the animals in their natural habitats. If you bump into or otherwise aggravate the animals, the meter will go down. But as you help document the environment with your photos, the meter will go back up. 
Be careful because if it gets in the red, we'll have to abandon the assignment. So stay sharp and be considerate of the wildlife. This is a herd of females. Oh good, they won't be so hostile. I wouldn't count on it. Even in the female groups, there's still a strong leadership hierarchy. See that big cow in the middle? That's the matriarch. Really, Professor? That's not nice. No, pal. Female elephants are called cows. And males are called bulls. Oh, she is definitely an extra large, though. She's also the leader of the clan. Why is she fanning her ears like that? Well, fan herself. Keep cool. Uh-oh, here comes Mr. Testosterone. Yes, this could be bad. He's already aggravated, even without all the females around. Looks like he got the hint. Should we follow him? No, let's stay and watch the interaction between the mothers and their young. that big could still be cute. Yes, 265 pounds at birth. Okay, make that huge. <laughs> the baby's wandering off. Let's follow and make sure it's okay. Looks like he wants to do a little exploring. I think his mother has something to say about that. Young calves are rarely allowed to stray more than 20 meters from their mother. safer from predators than adult elephants, but their little ones are still vulnerable. That's why they're forming a defensive ring around the calves. Looks like the elephants gave the wildebeest warning so they could get away in time. Only about a quarter of daylight hunts end in success for lions. Let's see if we can find another elephant family unit around here. Typically a bond group will consist of two or three family units like this one that stay within a mile or so of each other. Which way should we look? Animals tend to congregate near water, 
Look for any streams or rivers around here and let's follow them. Good, now follow it downstream. Has to go somewhere. Now might be a good time to review some of the photos you've taken. Press the tab key to bring up your portfolio. Right now you can view, rename or delete any photos you want. After the assignment is over, you can come back to this screen to reorganize your photos, email them or print them out. There's the lions. They're basking on the rocks. Still looking for a meal, probably. Let's not stick around. Continue on downstream.
This looks like another family unit. Yes, at a watering hole, like I suspected. Looks like they're not the only ones here for a drink. Look how the elephants are using their trunks. They're amazingly versatile organs with over a hundred thousand muscles in them. Burly. With their trunks, they can smell, drink, grass, squirt, even broadcast calls. Do they actually drink water through their trunks? No, that's a popular misconception. Actually, they fill their trunks with water, then squirt it into their mouths. In times of drought, a mother can actually draw water back out of her stomach with her trunk to give to the young. Now that's devotion. Actually, they're modified teeth, incisors to be precise. They grow out from the upper jaw. Those are big teeth. Yes, the largest set of tusks on record is 465 pounds. Wow! Hey, looks like they're having a little family reunion. Wonderful. This will give us a good look at their greeting ceremonies. Oh, you mean like pinching cheeks and complimenting hairdos? Well, not quite, but elephants do contact each other physically quite a bit. It's the sense of touch. It's like hugging. It helps maintain their familiarity and reassure each other that they belong. This is fascinating. This female is actually calling out for a mate. Very progressive. We're actually only hearing a small portion of the call. Elephants can communicate using infrasound, which is sound so low in frequency, it's below human hearing. These infrasound calls can carry up to three miles away. Let's see if we can't go and find our bachelor friend in his herd. It'd be fascinating to see their reaction to the female's call.